Hello guys, this is Karthik from ExeroAutomation.com and this is part 9 of our ALM with Team Foundation Server Dev and QA focused video series. And in this part we are going to talk about understanding and creating work items in Team Foundation Server which is part B of this particular video. We have already discussed part A in part 8 of this particular video series. So before watching this part I would request you to watch part 8 since this part is going to be a continuation of that part. Creating item links. So in the last video which is part 8 of this video series, we discussed how we can create an item and in this video we will discuss how we can create an item link which will act as a sub item for an item. So it will look something like this. As you can see here we have a work item and this particular work item can be of anything. It can be a PBI, it can be a task or it can be a bug or it can be even a test case or whatever it is. So you can see that this particular work item can be a test case as it is shown here. And within a test case you can have multiple work item links something like shared steps, shared parameters, test results etc. Similarly within a work item you can also have a change set where this change set is related to a build. So this is also a item link. Similarly, you can have a number of item links as shown here. So this is something which I took from Microsoft website. So you can read more about this information from Microsoft website itself. So the purpose of the item links is we can create many item links such as related work items, bugs, test cases and chain sets etc. So with this what will happen is for a particular task or for a particular PBI we can create multiple related child items so that we can map the particular work with other interdependent items as well. So editing an item with an excel sheet is also possible in team foundation server. So we can also edit our work items with the excel sheet so that large set of works items can be modified and created easily. So this feature is very helpful in many circumstances. So let's see this in action. So for that I'm going to flip to Visual Studio. Alright so this is the uh, same PBI which we created in our last video of this video series and you can see that it is uh, create a more robust and user friendly UI for uh, employee application. So let's open this particular PBI. So uh, let's say I want to add a particular work item for this particular PBI or let's say I want to add a link item so that for creating this particular task let's say I want to add some kind of additional child items so that it will be very helpful for me to develop this particular feature or to analyze this particular feature. So let's say what I'm going to do is I'm going to click this particular new linked work item. So as you can see here there's an option. So if I click this it will show you a different kind of window and it will say link type or what kind of link type it is. Is it a child or is this a parent of this particular PBI or is this a procedure of the direct procedure of this particular PBI or is it referenced by some other PBI or is there any references or it is related to some other kind of task or it is a shared steps or is it a successor or is this a test case or tested by or tests. So there are a lot of link type options available and you can tell whatever it is. So as you can select here you can see that the pictorial representation or the preview visualization will change based on the option that you are selecting as you can see here right so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this guy as a child for now and it is going to be a task so I'm going to select the work item here as well so what kind of type of work item it is so I'm going to say it is a task and I'm going to say it is a dev activity where I'm going to say check for the feasibility for the requirement something like this so if I click OK you can see that this particular new task will be created and you can assign this to somebody else as well so it's not always you can assign to an auto user you can also select some other user here let's say TFS user 2 and you can assign this as priority 2 maybe and this is a to-do task and the remaining work maybe 5 sprint hours 
and the activity is going to be a design activity and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to save this work item and you can see that it has been changed now if you go to your PBI you can see that in the links the particular child has been added here and similarly you can add multiple link item for your PBI by clicking this you can also link this to a change set and you can see that there is a new options coming here so you can map this particular child item to some other change set let's say if there is a check-in happens you can map this particular child item to that particular check-in or you can make this child to the child of another link as well similarly you can add the hyperlink model links and there are a lot of other options so based on whatever you want to do here you can perform the operations here so let's say if i want to add this to some change list so you can see there is an option here if i go and click this browse and then if I do a find here so it will show me all the change list which we have did so far and let's say if I want to map this to some kind of change list here and it says add a new employee to the employee entity or uh, let's say added failing test methods and if I hit OK so it is uh, it is mapped to a change set 8 and I can say for failing test cases and if I hit OK so you can see that this particular child, child item is also mapped to a chain set. I'm sorry, it is actually mean that this particular PBI is actually mapped to a chain set. I'm sorry, it is not something where the child is mapped to that particular uh, to the chain set. Rather, the chain set is mapped to this particular PBI, right? And then you can save this particular work item and you can create this. So this is how you can create the link to work item using your Team Explorer Office Host Studio, right? So this is the one more feature which is available. And let's say if I want to edit this particular items in my Excel sheet, what you can do is you can just click this particular open items in the Excel sheet, something like that. So if I click this, it will actually open our Excel sheet and then you can see that this particular PBI will be available and you can see that it's opening an excel sheet for us now and it brought all the data here so you can see that there is a PBI and uh, which user it is assigned to so you can also select the user from here and you can also select the state and the reason and what is the work item type so all those things so you can actually see this, there is a square box here. So you can just expand this here and you can keep on adding this particular stuff. So let's say if I want to add some other uh, PBI, then I can easily add from here. So let's say I'm gonna add one more analyze PBI. I'm saying that check the browser compatibility and then I'm gonna assign this particular task to uh, let's say TFS user 1 oops it should be TFS user 1 and the state is new and let this be here and I'm going to hit publish okay if we don't select the work item type then we'll get an error so I'm gonna say this is going to be a product backlog item all right and then I'm gonna hit publish here and you can see that the operation completed successfully so now if I go to my Visual Studio and now if I do a view result here you can see that our new PBI is also added here so this is the other way that you can add the work item from an Excel sheet in team foundation server right so that's it guys this is how you can work with your work items and also modify your work item in Excel sheet as well so thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day.